Guys, this is a story that has just blown up today. Um, on Monday, Caroline Wilson broke a story that uh, Patrick Dangerfield, the captain of Geelong, had been sounded out uh, to possibly go on the AFL Commission. Now, football clubs have completely lost their minds about this in the last 24 hours. One, it's an independent commission. So you can't have somebody who's won a captain or even an employee of a football club. So that, that's totally just not going to happen. Can I just uh, say this? It's not going to happen. It's just not going to happen. But it has had dramas everywhere. Even Patrick Dangerfield going, how the hell can an innocuous conversation about something down the track maybe end up like this? Who is leaking this? Now, the other knock-on effect of this is that Patrick Dangerfield is the president of the AFL Players Association who are up to their ears in a collective bargaining agreement negotiation with the two blokes who are seemingly seen to be offering a, maybe a position down the track. Today, the AFLPA have had to consider and then knock out the idea that he has to stand down from these negotiations. They say that it's got nothing to do with anything. Patrick himself is very considered in this that, no, it's not going to make any effect. But it's an interesting time in all that sort of situation. So what's happened then is suddenly... <laughs> I described this in our meeting beforehand. It's a bit like when you notice somebody's got a pimple on their nose. Uh, you don't notice it until you notice it, then you can't not look at it. And now they're all looking at what's going on with the AFL in as far as the, the executive's concerned and the commission. People are looking at Helen Milroy, who they b people believe will finish up uh, at the end of this year, uh, that Gabby Trainer's been on there for a fair while. Uh, Andrew Newbold uh, comes up at the end of this year. People are looking... The big push, though, is for Lee Matthews. The clubs are saying, we want Lee Matthews. Now, my understanding is that uh, the AFL wants somebody maybe more contemporary. Now, Lee Matthews at 150, I'd still think is mm. contemporary well, enough had... to understand what's going on. But the, the point is, the contemporary issue is what brought Dangerfield mm. into the picture. And they've, they've gone mad. So there's the, 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 the clubs are really furious that this is where things are going. Even as a thought bubble, they're saying, what the hell is going on? Well, it's a state of flux, isn't it, that, that's been ongoing now for, for two years. And Lee Matthews' name, Ed, has, has been around for two years and, and nothing's been done. And Lee wants and to do it. You, yeah. you've, you're massive yeah. on him being the man. Well, I am, because obviously get, I'm fortunate to get to sit with Lee every Saturday afternoon. I have for a number of years. And I think the way he would challenge opinions, he's, he's not, he doesn't go along for the ride. He'll, he'll challenge anybody in the game. I think anyone in the game would want to listen to him. And I think that... For me, Damo and everyone, it gets to the point of who comes up with Patrick Dangerfield and who's the one that thinks Dangerfield is the right person? He may well be in 10 years' time or, mm. or so, but um, I just think that for someone like Lee Matthews, why would he even want to take it on now when you it, know that... He does, uh, he does want to do it, yeah, and but, I think he's got the support. But I don't think they've called him, Ed. I think that he put himself out I there. I know that, to be correct. And yeah. they still haven't come around to... Well, they, they, they're sort him. of knocking it. They're yeah. saying, no, we'll go to contemporary. Andrew Island is another one, but uh, Lee Matthews seems to have the votes around that. Sydney are very strong on Andrew Island. Uh, he is, of course, though, the deputy chair of the Australian Sports Commission, so... Whether you can do both on that one would be a question that needs to be addressed. But uh, uh, as I said today, um, you know, this is where it happens. Last night in Canberra, all the clubs went up to Canberra. The Prime Minister, Anthony Albanese, was there. Peter Dutton, the leader of the opposition. But today, they're all blowing up that Richard Gorder wasn't there. Now, my understanding is that the chairman of the AFL hasn't been at this meeting over the duration, even going back to Mike Fitzpatrick. But people are going, wait, well, they just gave us $300 million for Tasmania. Mm. Maybe we should be there. So people are saying, OK, well, what's going on? And are we just getting people in? So I think I mentioned last week that uh, um, uh, Rob... Uh, oh... A middle block, he's a good motor one too. Uh, from Adelaide, um, Chapman. Chapman. Rob Chapman. Chapman. Yeah. Yeah. Rob Chapman's yeah. in the frame. That uh, De Boer is so, in the frame. All these things. So, this, uh, Gil McLaughlin said to me tonight, four names will go up to the selection committee with five presidents on it. That's what is going to happen, and it'll happen in the next month. Well, Ed, uh, let's paint the picture of that. Let's let's put it all up on a big page of the family tree, if you will. And I'm with you, uh, Lloydie. Lee Matthews is one of the most pragmatic people in football. So we've got, obviously, Andrew Dillon, who's got to backfill his own role. So that executive GM, he obviously goes up to CEO Travis Old, uh, as has been reported throughout the year. He's heading off to run the Grand Prix. And Brad Scott left 11 months ago. We've got Patrick Dangerfield, just because of the fact of the conversation we had. Yeah. And we've still got two vacancies, as well as a few questions marks on, on the others you highlighted below there um, Ed so we've got the biggest game that's too big to fail but you, you have a look in at head office guys and the fact that there's so many positions that are vacant and it makes it extremely difficult not only on Andrew Dillon but whoever else is working inside the AFL 
but we're so short staffed at our most pointy end of the game. But so, I, just, uh, I just want to say that who wasn't on there was Dylan McLaughlin, and I feel like uh, the mass confusion. If oh, I'm Andrew Dillon and I'm listening tonight, and you're talking about the confusion at the AFL and people are blowing up and clubs are going mad. I'd, be, I'd make it feel like, I'd take that personally and go, oh, I'm now running this game. I've got to come in. Well, he's not. I know, but that's what I'd be saying. Like, stand up and say, like, I need to take charge of this game. Give so, me an op- so Richard Goyder not being there. Gillan McLaughlin, are you in or are you out? I think uh, if I was Andrew Dillon, I'd be banging the desk hard tomorrow. Would you keep waiting, Lloydie? Sorry, no. like, uh, we, we're waiting for, for Gill to move. Clearly there was some patience being needed to see whether Brendan Gale would end up at the AFL. No. Would you keep waiting? Because some of these roles are 11 months up to two years that well, haven't been filled. Can I just say this? Uh, my information from the uh, meeting last night in Canberra with the Prime Minister and all the heavy hitters up there that Andrew Dillon gave an uh, exemplary speech that was so well received and he spoke as a diplomat and a leader and people were very impressed. However, let's get to the next point and this is what also flashed flashed out today and that is uh, the CBA was moving along nicely which is Gill's last job. It's hit the rocks and uh, it's finally got to this position. We've been watching this for a long while and the impasse, what's happening now is the players, the men's players are going hang on a second, why are we subsidising the women's game? This is our money, we're bringing it in. And the collective bargaining agreement has has been tied together by the PA in the first place. I think there's some second thoughts from a lot of the players, men's players now, that this should be two separate things. I don't have a CBA for the current season end. No. So it's broken down again. Yeah, and uh, I'm told it was going along nicely and now it's moving like a glacier. Mm. And uh, so (laughs) there's there's some issues out there to be resolved in, in football land.